All right. So, uh, uh, let's see. I'm, I'm going to... Yeah, we're going to wait for that to get set up. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, get, get it set up. I'm going to mute this real quick. Copy your... Just get tagged in. Oh yeah, good call, everybody. Yes, cryptocurrency. Yes. We should also put a link to that Discord to their Discord. Yes. I was. I, I was trying to. All oh. right. Craig, join recording. All right. So I think I. Yep. There we go. Got voice bot recording. We got everybody coming up in the chat. There we go. Kareem, you can come off mute now. Kareem might be gone. Oh, look, I see Cashman in there. What's up? What's up? What a legend. Welcome back, Kareem. Muchas gracias. All right. Starting to get a little, starting to get the little yes. influx of the people here. We're gonna, um, we got, we got uh, Craig recording. Let, let my people show. Oh, Craig is here. Thank you very much, Craig. And a special shout out to SGP for, you know, activating Craig. <laughs> Craig can be uh Craig can be very interesting. All right. So um Craig's our cameraman for anybody <clears throat> wondering. Yeah, except every cameraman, like Craig, like every other cameraman I've ever tried to have record me has said, why don't we just keep the cameras off and we'll go with audio? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I get it. All right, so I'll give us a, uh we'll I guess I'll start us in like two minutes ish. Sounds good. Works. Two two minutes works. All right, T minus two minutes. That's all you need here. normally. We're popping in here. That is all I need normally. Ooh, I just realized I'm recording all of my random computer sounds. Oh well, on OBS. That's all right. Close some of this other. Stuff. Do you have any? Uh, do you have any lawn guys outside, or could you go? find a dog that could bark or something uh zorro is here so <laughs> just just to give everybody a warning uh, my dog is very impossible to stop from barking if he you know sees anything that or hears anything that might uh upset him so i apologize in advance i'll just go on mute if that happens maybe he can sing for us <laughs> he also does sing he sings uh he sings happy birthday but I'll, I will not subject us to that. It's basically just him howling. Oh, wait. Did I just miss Zoro? No, no, no. He hasn't done anything yet. I'm no. just preparing people because Zoro's here. So I don't want to. <laughs> I literally just muted. I muted the mic because Ramses was going crazy over here. So. <laughs> yeah. So apologize in advance for Zoro. All right. So it's 11.05. I'll get it. I, I figure we'll get cracking. So welcome to the our cryptocurrency events chat this is the crypto basic podcast you may have joined us last week you may not have joined us last week but uh thanks for joining us this week we're gonna be doing this weekly show and basically the point is we're gonna try to tackle specifically stories from our cryptocurrency and look at them look at some comments if we can and just talk about them and uh the top stories of the week not necessarily of the day and we we tend to incorporate a lot of those stories into our Friday flagship normally. Uh, so some of this might be a little bit of an overlap, but for the most part, we're trying to get new, fresh content here. And uh, the way we kind of roll with our Friday flagship is uh, picking stories, commentating about them, not a ton of specific research. So a lot of this is going to be off the cuff. We are not financial advisors, and please don't take any of this as financial advice. All investments have an error risk. Okay. So, I to to get us started off, we're we're gonna be a little bit better this week. We actually have the links here. We put them in a little outline so that we can post them to the chat. Kareem's gonna be talking about this story. Got EOS. Yes. Now, yes. Before we get EOS. too crazy, 
if if you've listened to our show, unfortunately, we have talked a lot about EOS, and almost none of it is good. So I've got like fatigue on seeing like weird stuff pop up from EOS. It was one of those things that like we saw a lot of red flags. We really didn't want this to be a bad project because it raised so much money. It would be so bad for crypto if things like this happened. But Kareem, what's going on, man? Yeah, man, but there's always been red flags with the project, though. That's what it comes down to, you know? And, like, this is just another one of those things. So there's uh, a bug reported. That's what this article was about, where essentially RAM has become really valuable in the network. So the article talks about, like, breaks down how you know, all the decentralized applications need RAM to store data, so the EOS authority approved, um, they basically approved something where there would be a slight increase in RAM over time, but essentially RAM has become a commodity to the extent that right now it goes to for about um, 0.12 EOS for one kilobyte of RAM. So that's about 60 cents. Well, now somebody apparently, or there's a bug which allows somebody to run a malicious code and essentially flood up somebody's RAM, kind of like a DDoS attack, it seems like, but it just takes up a bunch of RAM with a bunch of garbage, uh, garbage data that's just there to like take up space, essentially. I wasn't able to gather whether or not you, that means you'd like, doesn't say anything about using that to steal funds, but it's just taking up RAM um, and essentially taking up resources because again, uh, Looks like the project's not that well constructed so far. Um, so anyway, that's the overall. I don't know if you guys have any thought on it. It's my my favorite comment for sure. Where uh, <laughs> the user uh, large Snorlax, uh, he quoted the part of the article that said new EOS bug steals resources directly from users, and he said, "I thought the ICO was over." <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and then somebody else, Musulas. Uh, he was like, I expect after this, the price will increase by 30%, <laughs> which by the way is so true. It's hilarious with EOS. And we saw it also with Verge. If you ever need a reminder that these markets are not rational, just explain these situations where something terrible happens or a terrible story comes out and the price just goes up 18%. Like, what are we talking about? So uh, SGP just said that was a mod shout out. Does is uh, so large Snorlax is a mod? Is uh, is is large Snorlax a mod in this chat? Maybe not. Um, yeah, or maybe Musulas, one of the two. But oh, okay. So yeah, he's well, he's a mod on the Reddit. Okay, cool. So yeah, look, I so here's the thing about Kareem. He is. He loves sucking up to people. So I think he knew that that was a mod, and he's just like, oh, let me pick this as my oh favorite. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, we we made the mistake of taking a class with Kareem, like, uh, I don't know, 12 years ago now or something like that. It was forever ago. And, yeah, watching <laughs> watching him just, like, manipulate the, the teacher and become the – the prize student, the center of attention was in, was a great thing to watch go down. Well, I have no idea where these attacks were coming from. I'm just talking about EOS. I literally but, have no uh, idea what Brent's talking about. What, yeah, what, I don't we even remember this class. What? what? We, we all learned to deal poker in like 2006, and Kareem was like the, the absolute prize student, pride and joy of that class. Uh, okay, well, all right. So I'm sorry that you guys had to experience uh, Brent's hidden decades of resentment and jealousy <laughs> over here that are coming out of nowhere. But if we could get back to Eos. Yeah, that was a really strange side tangent. <laughs> all right, well, whatever. Uh, I, I'm going to come up with a lot of strange side tangents uh, in my right, life. But... Don't be don't be hating on me hating on Kareem. Uh, guys, any thoughts on Eos here for a second? Okay, so... I, a couple, the first thought I have is I still don't understand what RAM is. I mean, I should, but because it's like essentially their gas, but they called it RAM. So I get this like, I, I'm like, so wait, are we using computer resources or or what? But uh, I, I don't think I don't think the RAM portion was as well thought out as maybe some of the other stuff. And the 
and the end result is they are having to change it and on the fly because there wasn't really much of a test net and they are now in a spot where there's a, a bug like this is you know they're going to go give somebody $10,000 for finding this bug hopefully yeah, I mean, I guess that's uh, one positive thing about EOS is that uh, lots of money, lots of people are making a living finding bugs. So that's good, you know, spreading the wealth. Yep, <laughs> that's a full-time job, finding <clears throat> finding bugs on, uh, on the EOS code. So, yeah, anyway, I don't want to spend the whole the whole podcast kind of shitting, or, you know, the, the whole event shitting all over EOS. Uh, we... We oh so some one of the chat members just said uh, I heard on EOS exchanges I heard EOS on exchanges can be hacked with this RAM bug um, you know okay obviously so can't verify that but I no we can't verify that and I have to be honest I'm not trying to to attack you I appreciate the feedback but I would need to see strong evidence for that because I don't see how a bug that is able to take up RAM with garbage data would be used as an exploit from an exchange that has specific uh, security parameters. So I'm not saying it's impossible, but I would definitely need to see strong evidence to even believe that. Uh, I saw the person that wrote this comment trying to use his voice. So I'm going to try to unmute him and see if he wants to add anything here. So uh, Bajit, we're going to unmute you real quick and see if you want to participate. Hello. Uh, all right. Cancel that. Oh, Bajit, in the uh, in the chat section, it looked like your name was lit up as if you were trying to talk, but we have all the listeners muted. So I was offering to unmute you to see if you wanted to comment. Mm. Well, I'll mute him again so he can try to respond to that. I can't, well, it says he's muted right now, but I can't unmute him. All right. Well, All right. anyway, if but if you have any like a link or something that specifically addresses that, um, oh maybe his mic was on push to talk. All right, so here, let me. Okay, not yet. Yeah, it's on permanent mute. <laughs> so. Well, anyway, if you have a link or something, while well, we figure out how to unmute you, um. I mean, obviously that would be huge, by the way. That's a huge story if this somehow allows for EOS to be hacked. I just don't see the connection or how it would be done. Okay. So, yeah, the, you know, it's just EOS, it would be really nice if it, if we could go a few weeks without some bad EOS news and maybe let them kind of put that money to work rather than... Um, rather than not i don't know yeah i mean look and this is not to say that there is no merit to the project but it's just not something that we expect out of a top 10 project right like this is supposed to be on the levels of neo ethereum um cardano and i don't know i don't think that like as far as market cap alone everybody put your own personal opinions aside for a project of this size with this many resources and this much hype um I don't know. I think that this is so far to say the least. Ooh, so so the uh, the link that we got may very well actually explain some of this, but I'm not going to be able to uh, to I'm not going to be able to read that. So there's there is a lot of code and a lot that I won't uh, you know be able to determine the veracity of. All right. So what? But. That we will include that post in uh, in the show notes. We'll end up talking about EOS again on the flagship because, you know, that's what we do. Every time we have a flagship on Friday, we talk about EOS. So we'll <laughs> we'll make sure to include it in the show notes and do some more research before then. Um, all right. So, uh, uh, wait a minute. It looks like uh, oh, there's a little bit of talk about somebody maybe talking. So th- our next story is going to be about uh, Vitalik murdering Craig Wright with words. So if, <laughs> I love we, we can move we can move on to that if we uh, if we want and we can always come back to EOS. Yeah, if, yeah, yeah. Move on to it. We can always move back. Come on, let's so keep this it is, going. This is what we're talking about here. <laughs> Vitalik has a really excellent way of murdering people with words because he just like says it in the most Vitalik way possible every time. But 
What he said, and this was a great top post, was if I see indisputable indisputable evidence that CSW, meaning Craig Wright, is Satoshi, it would change my opinion of Satoshi more than it would change my opinion of Craig Wright. And we have talked about we, we've talked about Craig Wright a few times on the show, and everybody has mentioned this idiot in their daily passings. Uh, for those unfamiliar, he is involved with the Bitcoin Cash Project for now, and he claims that he's Satoshi Nakamoto, or at least he claimed in the past. And he claimed it by putting forth information that was publicly available. He's like, here, this proves that I'm Satoshi, but anybody could have gotten that information. So... He refuses to do any other proof that he might be Satoshi, for instance, like moving something or adding a message to the blockchain or anything like that. So uh, the obvious answer is he's lying and he is like crazy. There's countless videos of this guy just being laughed out of conferences. And uh, <laughs> my, my favorite was that one where he just like recently came into the conference and started yelling at everybody. And he's like, oh, you don't want me and my technology here? You don't want me and my technology? All right. I'm going to walk out or else you got to kick this guy out. And the guy was just like five fake Toshi. <laughs> and then they kicked him out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that guy, it's super, super embarrassing in my opinion to go around with that type of attitude. And Brent, just to add to the whole story where he provided public proof, it's not just the fact that his, that the proof that he provided was publicly available, but also you would think that a person with the knowledge to create Bitcoin like a person who truly understands the cryptography behind it and everything. Like to me, it also shows that Craig Wright thought that he could present that as evidence and not get caught <laughs> and know enough, right? Because like, if you're the person that really understands how these systems work and you're going to put this forward, then you would know ahead of time that people are going to be able to be like, dude, what are you doing? This is like totally publicly available there. I think he used like a public key or something. Like there's no way Satoshi would make that mistake. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's, yeah, it's clearly Craig Wright trying to take advantage of the fact that whoever Satoshi was or whoever they were stepped outside and he's just been trying to plausibility that it could be him to make him money. So, you know, and it's obvious, it's apparent. I wonder if he had that moment where, like, he put it out and he's like, oh, this is totally going to work. And then, like, the first time somebody's like, what are you talking about? This is public. He was like, oh, man. He's, like, sitting at home. He's like, uh, well. What do you think, like, what do you think his actual, like, monetization goal is of that? Like, how can you just parade something so what do you, I mean, wild around? Like, like do, do you think you can just get away with that indefinitely and, like, charge people extra money to speak? You get conferences or whatever other I nonsense. Mean, conferences you're, you're are still get hiring. Consulting. What do you mean, people? Dude, yeah, of course. I think. No, it, I'm asking a... if there's anything else other than just this that like could be well, part of his motivation. But I'm, it's I'm personal just thinking brand. Out loud. It's personal brand. You know what I'm saying? It's prestige. <clears throat> it's respect. It's power. It's invitations. It's money. It's access. It's everything that comes with power and fame that everybody's pursuing. And he is specifically. He's obviously lying, and the reason he's such a pariah basically is because he's drawing the ire of the most knowledgeable people because they're the ones that can most clearly prove that he's full of it. And then he has this following of people who are just ignorant and believe him. I don't want to say anybody that follows him is ignorant, but like they, if anybody believes that he is Satoshi, they just don't know the facts. Well, Buddha has posted a very apt, uh, which I, what I believe was supposed to be a GIF. But yeah. It's, it's Jesus in the chat. So, um, you know, we're as we're talking it, about the I can actually know exactly what he's saying. I remember the scene. He's going. My GIF's playing and he's like, dry, he's like, puts his hands behind his head and he's like dry humping the uh, air. And then it's repeating. <laughs> uh, one one of the comments that that stood out to me, and this isn't that funny, but like it's real is uh, there was a guy named Eastside Ski that said, I want to upvote this because I'm glad people are discrediting Craig, but I also want to downvote this because there's no reason people should be talking about him in the first place. <laughs> so, yeah, at this point, <laughs> yeah, like, he's good. he's such a he's such a turd burglar that we we all want to, like, we all want to hate on him and talk about anything that he does. Just like if Carlos Matos posted something, we would all, like, talk about it. It's the same thing. 
you know, I don't know. And now he's and now Satoshi, poor Satoshi, is being forced out of another coin. He's he he tried yeah. his best with Bitcoin. They forced him out. He went to Bitcoin Cash, and now Bitcoin Cash has forced him out. Poor poor Satoshi. <laughs> Nobody likes Satoshi, <laughs> fake Toshi. But oh, by the way, as a, as a side note to this, I actually kind of love that uh, Vitalik has balls. You know what I'm saying? Just because it's good to have somebody, in my opinion, that is willing to call people out. Because you know that he's at least following. Um, he's mostly calling people out when he really thinks they're in, they're in the wrong, not just whenever he has a disagreement. We've seen him disagree with like Charles Huskinson, and they have a pretty respectful back and forth debate, right? But mm -hmm. when he feels that somebody's specifically scamming or targeting or whatever, dude, he's savage, and I love it. That's how that's how you use a platform. Kareem, I know we've we've mentioned this to each other a couple of times, and I just want to like put it out there one more time. I agree to this point that Vitalik is doing many, many very positive things with this attitude, but I still really feel like it's going to be hard. It's hard for somebody to have this style of personality and have it last as all positive. Well, no, yeah, for sure. I, I'm not saying that he'll, he's not going to make mistakes and things like that, but... Um, Eventually, he's going to call like... somebody a pedo guy. No, <laughs> and then it's no all over. Elon, no! <laughs> yeah, you either live, right? You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. I've seen that movie, Mike. I've seen it. <laughs> I haven't. Oh. Mike hasn't seen any movies. Oh my god! Yeah, I don't oh. even know what movie you're re referencing there. The Dark Knight. Uh, yeah, I actually have seen that one, but I didn't remember that quote. Wow, that's just one of the best movies ever. So, agreed. Agreed. Brent and I agree for once. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Mark it down. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about uh, Brent's favorite tech CEO. Mark Zuckerberg. Now, Brent, a lot of people may have not heard the podcast, so let's just put it out there. Brent is a huge fan of Mark Zuckerberg. Wait, wait, wait. hold on, Creep. Before you go on, Brent's also a huge fan of anybody's sister. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good point. <laughs> Especially Kareem's sister. The, the... Uh, <laughs> the... All right, go. Hello, Kareem's sister, if you're listening again. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, uh, Mark, Mark Zuckerberg's sister was put on as an advisor to Huobi's uh, coin that they use like as their internal coin, the Huobi chain or whatever it is, the, the Binance coin competitor, uh, which is which is interesting. Like You're seeing some machinations behind the scenes. Obviously, she really doesn't have anything to do with Facebook. She has her own like Zuckerberg media company, but like also she's Zuckerberg's... She's Zuckerberg, so like that that's a... Yes, the first comment was that it was a Trojan horse, which was which was pretty funny. We know <laughs> we know Facebook has been like mentioning trying to get involved in the cryptocurrency space. And <laughs> recently the the guy who's behind Facebook Messenger left the board on uh on Coinbase, which was uh, uh David Marcus. So he left the board and uh also Brian Armstrong Brent, just came did, out. Did did uh, cream? Did you lose Brent for a second there? I, I did. My guess okay. is I did. All right. So could you repeat that, Brent? My apologies. I don't know where I was lost. So the um, th this is happening at the same time that David Marcus stepped down from the Coinbase board, and he stepped down saying that there was a conflict of interest. Zuckerberg's sister is going to another exchange. Facebook's been chatting up about cryptocurrency a little bit. You could, and also Brian Armstrong from Coinbase has said, you know, we don't want to move fast and break things. That doesn't work when you're handling people's money. And the Reddit post that uh, that mentioned that comment, which I just threw in the chat there, makes it seem like he's throwing shade at Facebook there. So I, does it look to you guys like Facebook might be trying to acquire a an exchange sooner than later? I mean, it would definitely make sense. Uh, they have the money to do it, but um, I don't know, to be honest. You know, like, it, this is one of those things where, like, we can read in between the lines, but my guess is that more often than not, we're connecting dots that aren't there even, like, I'm not saying, like, a lot of dots are there, but we're just always connecting dots. So we could be reading too much into everything, you know? I don't, my, I don't my feel like we're going too are... far here. <laughs> this is pretty level yeah, one I stuff. Agree. 
I think it would be absolutely ridiculous if Facebook does not have any sort of significant um, resources, people, or something focusing on the future of blockchain. And I'm sure most of the research is going to contain whether or not they're going to create their own blockchain or if they want to connect to another blockchain or, or how they actually want to go about it, which is going to take a lot of time and learning. And, and I don't see this being a quick process, but I would be very, very surprised if this is something they're not working on. Yeah, I agree. By the way, the first line of that article, I just I have to read it because it's oh yeah, <laughs> it's a little cringy. That hey, line was great. Currency- yeah, a cryptocurrency exchange Huobi sent a friend request to a member of Zuckerberg's clan, and that friend request has been accepted. Like, <laughs> okay, so how about you spend 10 less minutes coming up with, like, super quirky things, and uh, let's get journalists to do more investigative journalism. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but anyway, hilarious. Yeah, that, I mean... Before we move on, uh, Kat... Cashman had a question for us. Um, he asked, would Facebook buying an exchange lead to the mainstream of crypto? Your thoughts? I mean, look, we already got bought coming from the New York Stock Exchange. You know, I, I think at this point, uh, it's happening either way. And it's just uh, a matter of whether or not Facebook wants to be a part of that game. But I think that there's enough people, enough entities getting involved now. Like Coinbase is big. Binance is getting huge every day. Uh, it's happening. Bakht is being launched. I I don't think it matters. That's my answer. It'll, I, maybe I it'll speed backed. it up. Bakht. Sorry. Yeah. Oh yeah. Bakht. Like Bakht. Yeah. It's fully backed. I, so <laughs> I don't like. like, uh, like I don't think that there's gonna be any singular driving force that we're like, man, that is like the mass adoption piece that we were missing. I will also say that Facebook, I feel, has failed pretty miserably on their money system. Now I'm not sure, but. They've had money, like you can send money via Facebook Messenger. You've been able to for a long time. I have done it like once and I've used, you know, Venmo, PayPal, crypto a hundred times more than that. But the, the, so they put that functionality in there and you would think, oh man, that's like a PayPal killer or that's a Venmo killer. Like it's so much easier to just send money on Facebook than it is on Venmo, right? Like your Venmo is already using your contacts. You might as well just do it on Facebook. And, and, you know, then you don't have to, like, send anybody, like, emojis to make it obvious what you're doing. Um, but, the it, you know, it didn't happen. So, I don't – Facebook sm- smashing crypto in some fashion doesn't necessarily mean it takes off, doesn't necessarily mean it's, uh, it's mass adopted. But it does – if they did something that actually integrated with Facebook itself, putting it in front of that many people would, would matter. So, we don't want to downplay that at all. But – so one of my thoughts on you know the kind of the model that Facebook has, and it's a super unique business model because we've never seen you know up until the past couple of decades what a tech giant could look like and what their flexibility looks like when they have that power. So the one thing that comes to mind is that um, Facebook and Google in particular, one of the ways that that they get rid of competition and increase their own product is that they just find other products that are good and they buy them and they try to sew them onto their platform. So one of my thoughts are um, if you have something like Facebook, you know what it's for, you know, the purpose is to connect with your friends, to stay in touch, you know, to post pictures of my kid, et cetera, et cetera. If you're adding a bunch of little features to it, then it, you just have to like delete the other options because that's what they're there for. That's what your brain says. I'll give you an example. You know, when we think of peer to peer mobile payments, PayPal is number one, Venmo is usually number two. And then there's a combination of kind of like whatever's after that. If, if you want people to use Facebook for peer to peer transfer, then you have to incentivize them to do it better than PayPal or Venmo, which they've been using for a long time. Also, another example is Facebook, what they've added with all these similar features to what Snapchat offers. And I don't know what the usage is looking like between the two, but I have no indication that Snapchat is suffering as a result of this. And I can't imagine there's many people out there that have Snapchat accounts and not Facebook accounts. Brent, you're probably a unique person for that. But I just feel like well, and the you younger want... generation, Mike. Real quick, like yeah. the the younger you get, the more that they have Snapchat, and the less that they have Facebook. That actually makes a lot of sense. 
I guess my point is if you want to have a product like Facebook and you want to add and and you want to replace other features that people are using on their phone, for example, I think you have to find a way to incentivize them to stay on your platform. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But here's the other thing too, is there's another trick, which is just a branding trick, right? Because one of the things that they can do is not incentivize you to cross over to the Facebook brand, but they can just buy other brands and keep them that way. So like, they don't have to incorporate WhatsApp into Facebook. They just buy WhatsApp, you know, WhatsApp. So th it could be something like that too, where they're buying something that's already in place and they never have to, to unite the two brands. They could just, they just bought the companies because they have so much freaking capital on hand. Yeah. I mean, Kareem, let's be honest. If I send an email on WhatsApp about seeing Black Panther, am I going to get Black Panther ads in facebook <laughs> where is that from again i definitely remember that that line. was the uh that was when the the uh the senate committee was questioning mark zuckerberg and he's like no it's end-to-end -end encryption we can't oh, see yeah. that and mm -hmm. they're like yeah okay you say you can't see that but what if i send an email and he's just like you can't send email in, in whatsapp right, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man watching these people testify in front of congress is so brutal because you realize that like 35 I mean, no, sixty percent of Congress is just catching up on the internet. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, so you say you could send a private message, <laughs> and it's like, oh my god. Uh, All right, so anyway, yeah, in the continue. end, uh, the the end result of that is Facebook crypto does not necessarily mean immediate adoption. It probably means an overvalued uh, launch of some kind because of the hype, and it will, you know. Nobody's using fa the the people that use the Facebook story instead of using Snapchat are not driving the Facebook story like that. Nobody's like they had it in your face for a while. Like, hey, you're uploading something. Do you want to put it to your story, too? And you're like, no, I use Snapchat for that. And you you do that or, <laughs> you know, so, you know, they, they've they've tried. They've done really well with their social network. Um, and if they don't get into blockchain at all, they're going to be they're going to be Kodak telling digital cameras that they're stupid. But the you know, which I guess Kodak actually didn't they get involved in blockchain somehow? Anyway, yeah, yeah, they, it was something dumb though, like the name or something. It, yeah, it, it yeah. was weird. Yeah. And photo, yeah, whatever. <laughs> all right, so enough of that. No more talking about Zuckerberg and his sister, or even Kareem's sister. Uh, we. <laughs> We, we got another uh, scumbag to deal with in this next story here. But um, so t this morning I learned that CNBC aired a documentary last night and it covered Bitcoin. So I have not seen it yet. The name of it was Boom or Bust. And so far it seems that there were fairly mixed reviews. Um, some of them were surprisingly positive and many of them were negative. And some of the reasons they were negative was because there was, a, I guess there was a decent amount of uh, of an interview with Jordan Belford. And for those of you who don't know, that is the guy that the movie Wolf of Wall Street was based off of. It was a mostly real story. Um, he's a Wall Street guy that's been very in the news over the past couple decades. Um, in 1999, however, he pleaded guilty to fraud and related crimes within the stock market. And he ended up doing 22 months in prisons for stealing hundreds of millions of dollars. So if you guys don't listen to the podcast, Brent, <laughs> Brent always reminds you, if you're going to do crimes, do it the right way. Well, I don't want to take too much credit for that. I probably do say it a lot, but that is Kareem's phrase. I got that from Kareem. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to commit uh, crime, I do a white collar crime. Don't do, uh, <laughs> don't like rob a convenience store or something. Just to be clear, the, the original <clears throat> statement was not if you're going to commit a crime. <laughs> I I just complain that rich people in this country don't get punished if they do shit. But same yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So apparently, uh, Jordan is openly against Bitcoin. Um, he has several YouTube, you know, snippets. He goes on these shows and talks about how he's such an expert and he knows a scam when he sees it and you know, all these things that are mostly ridiculous, but it is important to be able to understand both sides of an argument. Um, so the, one of the people they used as the positive side of Bitcoin 
um, is being described as a very unusual figure. He he went by the name Crypto Kid, and um, I guess in this story he sold most of his possessions for Bitcoin, and now lives in a treehouse somewhere. Uh, the validity of that <laughs> is in question. Um, but so with that type of of like regurgitation of this documentary had me a little concerned about how it could be positive. Um, but the more comments on this kid were basically like, yeah, I mean, he was really smart. He knew exactly what he was talking about. I mean, you know, some of the original Bitcoin OGs are, are pretty unique people. So unfortunately some of the best ones are going to, are going to not necessarily be, you know, your nine to fivers, so to speak. <clears throat> But uh, one of the big one of the big uh, segments on this was they covered an entire section on uh, South Africa, and essentially the the review was extremely positive because it it took a real deep look at what blockchain is going to do for you know countries outside of you know the superpowers and how it's going to be able to basically reinvent these small towns and allow them to to fix all these you know global economic issues that have kind of kept them suppressed for a while so you know one of the one of my personal opinions is that it's probably very mixed i bet this documentary i'm gonna there's probably gonna be some parts i liked some parts i didn't like uh and i was hoping some of the people listening to this chat actually watched it so uh did anybody actually catch this did anybody see what was going on by the way, as a side note, the kid in the treehouse, I did see an article about that. But like, first of all, you know, he is, he's a millionaire and his house still looks pretty dope. So like if they choose to live kind of like isolated or whatever, you know, like that doesn't take away from the fact that they caught on to Bitcoin years ago. But yeah, obviously the documentary is biased right off the bat. If that's your proponent, when you could easily get, I don't know, Andreas Antonopoulos, uh, you could interview somebody like, I don't know, Vitalik, could, the CEO of a major cryptocurrency, somebody like that. So, <laughs> you know, listen, right off the bat, let's they're obviously just, tilting it. Let's just be honest here. If we had a bunch of Bitcoin and we were living in a treehouse, would that make us happy? Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, he's living his best life. I, look, I pay money to go sit in cabins and mountains and shit. What, what's the difference? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get, I, I, you know what? Maybe they did pick the right person. Maybe they picked the right person who, like, he's like, nah, man, I got all this Bitcoin now, so now I'm just going to chill in this treehouse until well, like, I don't want to spend I, it. Obviously, we we haven't seen it, so I don't know what it actually was. But I, through sorting through the comments, it definitely felt like he was the right person, but he's a kind of a little bit weird. So it's going to be a weird to, like, use this type of person to, to convince people that Bitcoin is yeah. so awesome. But that's exactly my point, though, like, it's tilt in the if they're choosing that look come on like a lot of resources and time goes into these documentaries and clearly anybody any journalist who's sitting down to do a documentary about bitcoin where they're trying to present two sides if they go to the proponent side there are lots of options to choose from so they it, it feels like i'm not saying that this person can't be featured but there's obviously a lot of very articulate voices out there uh, that you can speak to if you actually want to show multiple sides. Yeah, and as we will often say about documentaries, they present themselves as like a factual uh, piece of information where they're kind of looking at both sides, but every almost every time, every documentary has an agenda. So you need to be very aware of what the agenda behind the documentary is. Even like companies like vice that were making good documentaries will put out you know very biased documentaries at times so um you'd be just be careful when you're watching do documentaries especially uh jordan belford has been very anti-crypto and also mm -hmm. very completely not knowledgeable about crypto like he when you yes. watch him talk about it he's just like yeah it's a scam you know it's one of, it's a scam it's gonna it's a bubble He's just saying the same things that like grandpa says to you when he hears that you're involved in that funny money. Like <laughs> it's uh it's not pointed analysis. He's not saying anything like, you know, maybe it maybe maybe the fact that Facebook payments didn't catch on shows the lack of interest in peer to peer transactions, which is why this probably won't take off even though it makes sense. Blah blah blah. Like he's not saying anything like that. He's just like, nah, nah, it's a scam. It's a scam. I know a scam. Yeah, Brent. When I see one. <laughs> 
I'm I'm really glad you said that because this is another rant for me. I we kind of touched on this last week, but like a lot of people have areas of expertise, but it makes no sense to me when we just take somebody and for no reason other than their fame or whatever, all of a sudden their opinion on everything matters, right? So you have an individual here who has very limited knowledge of this space and clearly doesn't demonstrate that he has knowledge of this space. His claim to fame is the fact that he was able to hustle people and sell them garbage stocks. And all of a sudden, his opinion is super. Yeah, exactly. It's like, where's Ja Rule? Where's Ja? Exactly. It's exactly the point. Like, Kareem, are you telling me that you don't care what Kanye West thinks about Donald Trump? No, I don't care what Kanye West thinks of Donald Trump. I don't care what Ja Rule thinks about the Middle East. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care what some guy who sold stock for a living and specifically scammed uh, consumers uh, has to say about crypto if he can't muster three coherent sentences about it and he just thinks it's a scam. Yep. I can I can respect the opinion of anybody who thinks it's a bubble. I can respect the opinion of anybody who thinks that it, a particular coin may be a scam project if they present good evidence. I cannot respect the opinion of somebody who just says Bitcoin's a scam and doesn't understand a thing about it. So, um, Clear, Clearly, by definition, you don't know what a scam is or you don't know what Bitcoin is because – Nobody like who's in, who's who's scamming in Bitcoin. I mean, I guess unless it's Satoshi just sitting like, oh, I'm gonna wait 20 years, and when these things are worth 12 billion, boom, I'm out. <laughs> All right, don't Scam. you mean Craig Wright? <laughs> oh yeah, Craig Wright. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> hey Brent, uh, I'm gonna read my favorite comment, and I'm gonna post the screen name in the chat here. I'm gonna see if you can take a shot at it. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, damn. I mean, that's clearly a full name, like Nira J. Right. Thakur, I guess. I'm really that's, bad at pronouncing actually pretty names. good. Uh, that's better than I would have done. Uh, but his comment that I that I found the most interesting and I enjoyed the most, it says, and I believe this was in, in reference, it was in reference to Jordan Belfort. It says, your era is gone now. It's wolves of crypto here now. Ooh. So yeah, there's a couple of ways to take that, but oh, I'm choosing. That the wolves I'm choosing. <laughs> You're damn right it is. <laughs> so we haven't commented on what's been being said in the chat, but as we were talking about the the South African adoption being like a something that's going to lead this, uh, basically there was a story. Now, we haven't read this story, but it seems like the story is that if you want to get money to a family member, you have to give it to an Uber driver who gives it to a bus driver who then will probably deliver it to your family members. And there's a, there's a video here in the chat that I put in my uh, – my my uh folder to digest later but still uh you know that yeah that's we've never we've always said that the adoption is coming from things like this or things like venezuela it's not coming from it's not coming from backed as much as we would like it to come from backed the backed is just another exchange ish product that just happens to be being put forward by a very important company in the united states but actually being used as a means of exchange, actually being used around countries that are it's solving a very specific problem is where this comes from. So just, you know, be on the lookout for more and more things like that. And that is that to me is more indicative of a future bull run than uh than ETF about to get approved tomorrow. Yeah. So it doesn't happen. And since you mentioned Venezuela, Brent, I'll just mention one of the top posts this week uh was I haven't double checked this, but I mean, based on the numbers we've seen, it sounds about right. But if you bought a million Bolivares, that's the Venezuelan currency in 2013, a million dollars worth of Bolivares today, they would be worth three dollars and forty cents. Ooh wee! <laughs> oh, that I mean, that's that super sad. Fucking rough. Yeah. Imagine the insanity there. I mean, that is just. I, mean, I don't know. Anyway, like that population, you think that they don't now see the need in being able to put their money in something that's not controlled by a crazy dictator, you know? Yep. That I mean, that's just that's super sad. I hope uh, I hope everything, you know, works out and the the Hunger Games don't go on too long there. We can and Yeah, Greece a couple of years back, absolutely. And Andreas Antonopoulos talks about that all the time, trying to get his mom to to take some of her pension money out 
from euros or or from the Greek currency and put it into Bitcoin. Yeah, we, we our editor is from Greece, and we talk to him about this stuff all the time in a private chat. And uh, you know, he he's got some great perspective on it too. By the way, it's not even a joke. Even for us, you know, we talk about how it's easy for us to send money around. We've had a million headaches sending him money through PayPal. Yeah, right, Brent. Yeah, like PayPal what? Like Jesus. Been really, they they'll randomly just put holds on stuff for a week and tell him it's his fault, and it's like really, uh, yeah, it's it's not. Uh, it's not good. He, I mean, he doesn't. He's he's learning more and more about crypto as he does our as he does our podcasts, and I think he'll be accepting crypto sooner than later. But, uh, yeah. but for now, we're using we're using stupid PayPal. So, <clears throat> oh, um, hey, you want to do this brave story because uh, I want to have some time to see if anybody has any questions. Okay, yeah. Well, the brave story was the last one that we were going to talk about because uh, mostly we just did a one one on brave. And we're hoping to get somebody from the team. We're we're working with we're working on contacting somebody from Twitter that said they would be willing to talk with us. So we'll hopefully have an interview from somebody from the team at some point. Brave has hit 10 million downloads in uh, in the uh, I guess one of the app stores. I don't know if it was the I actually should have looked at whether that was Apple or Android or maybe it was combined. Oh no, Google Play. Okay, so it was a Google Play Store. So. Brave is obviously integrated with the basic attention token and they're and it's a crypto backed project. I like that the title of this particular story on the subreddit is that it was a crypto backed project because um, they have a crypto asset, but Brave itself is separate from that. And Brave is a great browser experience. I have I've been using Brave on Android as uh, my primary browser for a little bit. It does not integrate with all the like cool Brave payments and everything that they have going on with desktop. But it is just basically a better Chrome with an ad blocker, and it's faster. Well, actually, it's the same speed as Chrome on on Android, but it's faster on the desktop. So I use Brave as my default browser. I think a lot of people will really enjoy the user experience from Brave. I They are not very decentralized. In fact, they're not a whole lot different than Firefox or Chrome, but they are do, they're going about attaining users in a very good way, and I think that if we improve upon our current best browsers being Firefox or Chrome, only good can happen. So the, uh, so the, the fact that there is a crypto asset involved is nice. It is on the Ethereum blockchain, but most of that is handled through the brave ledger. And they have this kind of mind boggling, uh, partnership with uphold and uphold is just about the worst exchange I've used. Like, well, most of the time I get, I just stop using an exchange when they when the user experience is similar or I see that they're taking those kind of fees. But I had to go through that if I wanted to get our content producer money from Brave, our, our basic attention token. And the uh, yeah, Uphold is just bad. So I hope they really move away from Uphold sooner than later. But the, the fact that yeah. they have 3.5 million active users on, even though they've got 10 million downloads, but 3.5 million monthly active users, according to, uh, according to Brennan Eich on... I don't know if I said his last name right, but on Twitter. So that's pretty That's pretty big. That's a big user base. And Brent, you said that uh, the currency and all that aside, this has been your favorite browser overall, right? You said that it's got like really good security and it was fast and everything. Yeah, it, it is faster than all than my other browsers with the add-ons that provide the similar security. So Brave has a built-in uh, VPN. It's got a built-in uh, ad blocker. You can use the Tor browser in there if you want. And it... It is faster than Chrome. It's faster than Firefox. I often still have to use Firefox for things. Like, I can't even get on Binance on Brave because it's it's too good at protecting some things. Like, uh, But it is the default browsing experience now for like 60 or 70% of what I do, and they're going to get better. And there's definitely some add-ons that I kind of can't live without that I have in Chrome for when I'm doing like real, like, you know, balls to the wall production work where I am using like, I don't know, a boomerang to do emails, or I'm using I'm using the one that uh, you find out the emails from people's websites. There's a lot of stuff that I can't get away from, so I can't use I can't stop using Chrome yet, or I can't stop using Firefox yet. And I love the Facebook container on Firefox. Brave doesn't have anything like that, so I can't access. Like if I ever do access Facebook, which is very few and far between, I've got a couple of things that are keeping me to Facebook uh, from people who just refuse to change. And so let me ask you, oh, go ahead. And I, I only access Facebook through a Firefox container. So I'm hoping Brave comes up with a container similar to Firefox soon, but it is a very good product. And I'm 
excited to see a working product that is good. Not like that you're making some sacrifices to use, <clears throat> but a working product that is very good in the crypto space that was crypto backed and is integrated with the crypto community. I'm excited to see Brave get better and better. All right, last, uh, last question I have for you about Brave. I have heard, um, I think maybe even from you, I've heard it before too, that if you don't pay for a VPN, like there's a good chance you shouldn't really trust it. Do you know, like, is their VPN pretty good for Brave? Or uh, as far it's free, right? as far as I, yeah. So the the thing about a normal free VPN is you're giving them access to your uh, to to direct you to where they want you to go. So and you're also giving them access to all of your browsing data. So the thought behind completely free VPNs is like they're probably honey pot honey pots or they're you know they're pseudo trojans from like if you were the if you were trying to get user data on people. What would be a great way to do it on the people that you're having the hardest time getting the user data on? Release a good VPN that's free and then collect all that data and then like use it or whatever. Right. So as far as I know, Brave still has their warrant canary, I, I, uh, which is the thing that they put up to say that they've never been subpoenaed. Um, uh, let me... Uh, I'll Google that. But I think, th I think they still have it. Um, uh, and I, I can't remember what... I can't remember which VPN they have built in there. So, anyway, they uh, I I use a different I use a different VPN and I use it from my desktop. So I guess I don't know how that works with the Brave VPN. Maybe I have double VPN. Maybe they cancel each other out. It's like putting on two condoms. Um, I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, I did pay for a VPN. Is that how that works? Yeah, two condoms. Yeah, cancel they like each other out. yeah they rub against each other and then rip and stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, don't try it at home. We are not condom advisors. All condoms have inherent risk. <laughs> 0 0.01 percent <laughs> from what i hear in commercials <laughs> you, you mean they're 99.99 percent uh, effective kareem right right i guess i framed it in a negative light uh all right cool uh any questions i know i posted something in the chat but i don't know if anybody wants to get on here you could comment via voice chat any of the stories we talked about or anything we yeah you can ask us missed. random questions talk about the stories anything like that we uh we always envision this as being like 30 minutes of us you know rounding up the stories and then 30 minutes of us kind of talking to people but we keep screwing up and talking forever so so i guess that's a yeah. good problem to have if one of your primary and it seems like people like podcast. listening to us more than they like talking to us well <laughs> to be fair we don't know if they're actually listening to us or not but Uh, all right so we got uh if there's an adoption i don't think bitcoin should be used for that there are other coins that are more suited for crypto adoption um i actually i actually agree with uh with bajit here the yep. um crypt or bitcoin is its biggest strength is the network behind it which is obviously the most important thing for any cryptocurrency but currently until the night lightning network really takes hold and things get better there it's not the greatest it's not great for peer to peer transactions i mean if you're just talking about you know peer to peer payments you want one of the d directed acyclic graph coins you want iota you want nano yeah those are the quick fast cheap coins that the cheapest and hottest they they will <laughs> <laughs> they're they're easier for the peer to peer adoption standpoint but there's I have a, a lot of intangibles there. Comment here. I have a thought here, and the more that I've considered the options for mass adoption, the more that I keep coming back to the fact that people are going to struggle interacting with assets that have rapidly changing values. And I think that until we have a really solid collection of stable coins, then there's just like so many roadblocks to allowing many people to have interest in owning crypto. You know, I, I do think it sounds a little bit played out, but I like that old, you know, Bitcoin might end up being kind of like old where uh, I feel like Bitcoin can succeed without being the most transacted currency. It could be the most trusted currency where a lot of assets are backed on Bitcoin. Maybe you have, uh, you know, like, Big institutions have large amounts of Bitcoin and you can use it to move it around in big amounts. 
Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, like you said, there could be all kinds of other, whether it's stable coins or some of the kind of low friction, something like Nano, something like IOTA, something like whatever, some, one of these quick transaction ones. Mm -hmm. Um, Bitcoin could also I be I feel very. Like I do see that vision. Oh, sorry. Bitcoin could also be very important for something like Komodo, uh, if more projects start doing that, where they are basically right. uh, backing up their blockchain on the one with the biggest network, so that they are resistant to an attack. So, you know, maybe maybe Bitcoin's end end use case is that it is the daddy for verifying all blockchains together. I don't know. Who knows? We I literally have no idea what's going to happen in the next year. So the everything moves so fast in crypto. I don't I don't want that to sound, you know, Bitcoin hating. I, I actually, you know, back when we started our podcast, it was when it was like forty dollars to send a transaction on the Bitcoin network. So I was like a big I was a big hater on like, yo, they need to get their shit together. They did get their shit together. So now it is uh it is significantly more usable, just not in that peer to peer instant payment for a coffee way which maybe back changes that we don't know uh next thing that we just got a question on jw victor saying thoughts on future content producer or thoughts on the future for content producers um that is a that that is a very broad very big question brave and projects like it like library or uh, maybe even steam are really trying to be disruptive to that space so um if the Brave browser takes off, like let's say the Brave browser takes off and it becomes uh, the, you know, I'm not going to say Chrome because like deseeding Google is just, you know, that's a pipe dream at this point. Um, but it could, it could deseat Firefox, which the, the creator of Brave was one of the original creators of Firefox. So like it could, it could supplant Firefox as the second best browser. It could get a lot of uh, a lot of adoption and then if a lot of people are automatically directing all of the money that they get from um from their watching of ads or from their seeing of banners to their favorite content producers it would be amazing if uh we could get away from youtube we could get away from itunes and we could start to have a real content production um way to make money off of off of brave without sacrificing any sort of uh integrity so it's very tough in the crypto space as a content producer because it's not like you know like if we were a fantasy football podcast we could sell you like our fantasy football draft kit like the like the foot the, the fantasy footballers podcast does if we were a podcast about podcasting uh like uh the audacity podcast we could sell the membership to the podcaster society you know as we've like tried to think about different ways we could monetize this one our what are our options to sell to the crypto community we'll sell you our our technical analysis that we don't think is a thing or we'll we'll sell you our list of portfolios which we list out there all the time anyways so yeah it would be nice if there was a way to just uh based on the users that are being directed towards you you get some money so um and I, and i also see brave and basic attention token having like a snowball effect of adoption <clears throat> because if you're say cnn and you've basically been accruing all of this basic attention token while it's been gaining adoption for a few years and you don't know anything about it and finally one of your employees who understands it comes to you and they're like hey listen you have like forty thousand us dollars worth of a cryptocurrency sitting there you just have to verify cnn as a basic attention token company and you will get that distributed to you they're gonna be like oh shit okay well let's do that like we'd love to have another office party for cnn and they will like <laughs> the, you know they'll release it and and now all of a sudden they are a verified content uh content um what are we called uh i can't remember what brave exactly calls but the they're verified with brave they get the verified brave payments and for instance inside my brave browser i only give my brave my basic attention token payments to verified publishers so, you know, the there's only five or six that are in my kind of daily daily rotation, and then I'll turn off any that I think are uh that are, you know, not on the up and up or something like that. So like Coin Market Cap, for instance, they are verified on Brave, but I turn them off as far as my Brave payments going there. So it's nice to kind of control that, to look in and see where your money's going and and yeah, hopefully content production can possibly survive on Brave versus being required to survive on YouTube with the constant threat of demonetization, especially if the 
if the overall sentiment towards crypto were to shift, if it were to shift back to the like, ah, it's only used for drug dealers and hitmen kind of <clears throat> thing, to the point where YouTube may be incentivized to demonetize some of it, then you're in a spot where YouTube is completely in control of your of your living. Not that Brave is particularly decentralized, but at least they're crypto friendly centralized. Well, look, for, for what it's worth, I would say even bigger picture, if it's not brave, if it's something else, I do think that we're going to keep seeing the same trajectory, which is that technology is going to make it easier and easier for content producers to connect directly with the audience. So, And we already saw how the internet has eliminated a bunch of middlemen and a bunch of gatekeepers. Right, where, Uber, like, for example, now- Airbnb. Yeah, and even this, you know, even our own podcast, right? Like the three of us can get together, record something, we can upload it to an RSS feed, and through a bunch of different apps, we can go to Spotify, we can go to iTunes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's still some centralization around iTunes, around YouTube for YouTube uh, content, whatever. But my guess is that we're going to keep seeing this trajectory where. We're going to start eliminating some of those, and hopefully we don't have to rely on a single centralized authority that's going to create an algorithm that's just going to go through half of the videos and demonetize them. But something like this, or or like Steam, which is maybe not the final polished product that we want, but I think it was on the right track as far as trying to structure uh, you know, incentives through participation. Like whoever's getting the most likes, the most reads, the most thumbs up should be rewarded as such right so there'll be tweaking there'll be a lot of projects competing for this but i think that the future for content producers is super bright and that there's more potential for it than ever uh, and i think it's you know it's really exciting you know where anybody can be a content producer about whatever their passion is yep very good very good question very good answer by kareem mine was a little <clears throat> bit more ranty as usual, Kareem is the star student. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Um, I guess, I mean, we are technically past time, but anybody else get any other questions or anything else? Any last comments? Do, 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 do. Any more pictures uh, of Jesus <clears throat> or... Uh, Oh, oh my God. Okay, so last week I mentioned that... Oh, jeez. I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I have to bring this up. Last week I mentioned that Carlos Matos had like an Instagram or something. I couldn't I couldn't remember that. And I, I actually went and looked it up and he has a Twitter. And he has like, you know, he doesn't post as much anymore. But back then he did have like these random videos of himself like going around town going like, hey, hey, hey. Is Carlos Matos and and I will give the guy a little bit of credit. He did post in January. I cannot recommend BitConnect until this blah 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 situation is taken care of. It was like one of their subpoenas or something, and or the, or the <laughs> cease and desist or whatever. So I can give him a little bit of credit for that. He did say in another video that he lost a bunch of money. So uh, he said he lost hundred thousand dollars, and I was gonna start feeling bad for the guy, but you will never guess what his current job is. It is plastered all over his Twitter. He's got the banners. He's got everything. He's got the hashtags. Oh my! Here God, comes. What, believe it or not, it? Carlos Matos Her- now Herbal Life works for Herbal Life. That is correct. Oh my God! I called it. I called it. <laughs> I swear I did not look it up. Oh my God! He is now wow. an Herbal Life shill. So he went from one scam to another. It is. Like, it was to the point where I thought that it had to be a troll. Uh, that, that that wasn't really his account. Uh, I did the research and found out that it is, in fact, his account. He is, in fact, an Herbal Life person. I did reach out to him to have him come on the podcast. He has declined to respond to me. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just thought that was funny. Shocking. We, we talked about it last week, uh, and it's really, you know, whoever's giving this guy life advice <laughs> is... Uh, he didn't even get in like one of the new pyramid schemes. He got in like Herbalife, which has been around forever, so he can't even like get in at the top. Poor guy. <laughs> oh man. All right. SGP coming in. He's watching right now. <laughs> yeah. Carlos, if you're in the chat, listen. Feel free to jump in here. We'll give you a hey, hey, hey. I promise to give you a fair shake on the podcast. I'm yeah. not gonna I'm not gonna just rag on you. <clears throat> 
Come uh, on, Carlos. We're done ragging on Bitcoin. Egg. Those days are gone. Things are not the same. <laughs> All right. Well, now that, as happens with our normal weekly episodes, as we know, we've degenerated in talking about Herbalife and Carlos Matos. We figure we're probably towards the end of our actual value production of the of the podcast, and now we're just. Uh, you know, yeah. now we're just basically a walking meme. So, but thank you guys for joining us, though. This is this has been fun. Yeah. I uh, I'm looking forward to finding more about Carlos Matos's profile next week. I'm sure Brent <laughs> will do the research. I research the hard topics. We leave we leave the stuff to you about like the um what what did, about EOS's RAM problems, and I I go look at who the newest Herbalife shill is. <laughs> Ah, I love it. So thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Check us out, CryptoBasicPodcast.com, or you can follow us on Twitter at CryptoBasicPod. We, uh, you know, we tweet sometimes, not that much, but we, we try. And mostly yeah. our Discord is where we uh, interact with most people. You can find the link on our website. So be back next week. Same place, same <clears throat> time, yep. same channel. We'll be here. Thanks, same guys. Everything. No! no! Craig said, but I'm not <clears throat> recording that channel. Oh no, has Craig not been recording this whole time? No! Craig's a douche. Uh, <laughs> man, ah, it's a good thing somebody had OBS going as a backup. <clears throat> I see what you did there. All right. Yeah, I think it's only coming out of one side of the mic, though, unfortunately. But whatever. We'll do what we can. Oh, I forgot to change that one setting that Kareem screwed up the first time when we did the OBS that I told him to do and didn't all right well whatever we got something <laughs> we got something if what? craig didn't have did anything. you just blame me for a random mistake you made you're on your computer <clears throat> no no, no, he's like, oh, no. Oh, i forgot yeah, yeah, yeah. no no he's like oh i might have done that mistake that cream messed up last week <laughs> no no what's last i should have known uh, not to do it because yeah, yeah, yeah. we troubleshoot yeah, it yeah i'm sure already wow calm down stars dude nobody say all anything right. bad about you all right <laughs> we're out bye thanks for all listening right. see you guys